In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Temple. So the legend we learned is that uh, when Our Lady was three years old, uh, her parents, Joachim and Anne, uh, brought her to the Temple and uh, consecrated her to the Temple, gave her in to be uh, one of the Temple Virgins. And Our Lady uh, looked, didn't, look, didn't look back. She, 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 they say that, that she ran up the stairs of the temple, ran up to join the temple, to live in the temple, and live in the house of God. And that she wanted to do this, and uh, many of the young girls did, not all, but the, the chosen uh, girls got to go live in the temple and uh, stay there until it was time for them to marry, so they were ready uh, for marriage. There were no uh, consecrated virgins at that time. A consecrated virgin is a, a life of perfection, and there was no perfection yet impossible in the Old Testament. So it wasn't a time of perfection, and so uh, the time of perfection is now uh, for us. So Our Lady uh, began that. So uh, she went into the temple with the other girls, and uh, she was trained up in the scriptures, the study of the scriptures, and uh, trained to uh, how to be uh, do the domestic chores, and so they could be uh, uh, mothers and wives uh, one day. And also they helped out uh, with uh, the work in the temple. And this was um, uh, uh, their, their duties. And uh, we meet Anna later when our Lord uh, was presented in the temple. She would have been one of the women there helping to train, uh, train these young girls. And she would have known the Blessed Virgin Mary well when, she, when, when Our Lady came back with Jesus. And they gave joy to her old age as she got to hold Jesus in her arms and have that happiness, but she already knew and helped train the Blessed Virgin Mary. So some of their other works that they did was take care of the temple things, uh, take care of the, uh, you know, polishing the brass and sewing the linens and, uh, and uh, these things. And uh, we can imagine with what a great love and great uh, diligence Our Lady our Lady did this work because she was doing it for God and she was so, so happy to be able to work in, working in the house of God, doing the work of God, making things for the use of, of God in, in, in the temple. <coughs> One thing he also made was the veil, the veil that went, went to, the great veil that went before the Holy of Holies. And this veil, I say, was four inches thick. So four inches, that's about 10 centimeters thick. It was very big, very high, very wide. And uh, this is the one that was torn on Good Friday. It was torn in half from top to bottom on Good Friday by the angels because it was no longer needed, because the temple was no longer uh, the holy place. But at the time of Our Lady, it was the holy place, and she, she would help make these veils. They would change it twice a year, so they'd have to make many of these veils. And uh, two times a year, we could change with a, a new one. But, um, this was the work of Our Lady, and we can imagine with what uh, love she did all this work because she was doing it for the house of God and God and she loved God uh, more than anybody else more than any other creature she had this great love for God and how she loved to do the things uh, uh, for God and she wanted to uh, dedicate herself uh, to his service and so she did this with great love and what happy time it would have been for her these were the happy days of our lady there were no sorrows for her yet uh, she was young in the temple, being able to go and pray before before uh, the the temple every day, before the before the holy of holies. Go pray there every day and uh, say her prayers and learn the psalms and learn the prayers and uh, and, uh, and give uh, honor to God and how much time she must have loved to spend in the temple there uh, with God. So we think uh, what uh, a great grace it is that Our Lady had and uh, how she was. Uh, so perfect in her consecration to this time. She loved to be there at the temple, loved to be in the house of God. But now uh, people get a, a greater advantage. They can be consecrated virgins. This is something for the New Testament that they can consecrate their lives to God. They don't have to uh, go marry. Then all the girls got married at that time uh, and uh, had families and became mothers of families. That was uh, the main thing uh, to do. And uh, Our Lady, uh, and though consecrated, she did consecrate her virginity to God and she made a vow of virginity. So she was uh, really one of the first uh, to make that vow of virginity. And then God saw that she was able to keep that and that uh, he provided St. Joseph to be her guardian and her spouse. 
uh, but they had a virginal marriage to Holy St. Joseph. So we think of Our Lady in the Temple and how the Temple was completely dedicated to the service of God. And there were no uh, false gods or no corruption uh, allowed in the Temple. And it was a great, uh, wonderful time for Our Lady and uh, her great uh, joys in her youth where she was learning to love God uh, very, very much and uh, serve Him very well. And now we see how the temples, <coughs> the houses of God have all been desecrated. They've all been desecrated by uh, the destroyers, by the ones that are supposed to be uh, consecrating them to God, or the ones that are supposed to be protecting them, the ones that are supposed to be seeing that they are made beautiful and holy for the service of God. And instead, uh, they desecrate them and corrupt them and, uh, and uh, destroy them. So we have to pray to Our Lady that we might love the house of God and try to make it always beautiful and be, uh, have, have, be delighted to be able to do something uh, for the house of God, to make it more beautiful, more edifying, more, uh, more glorious uh, for the honor and uh, the joy of God as Our Lady did when she was a young girl. So let's pray to Our Lady for the restoration of the church and that the, the uh, temples and the places where we have masses might be made as beautiful as possible. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.